Praise God. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing this week? Awesome, awesome. So you guys probably seen this sign that I made uh, years ago. Actually, my brother made this, but it's uh, a good little quick. Gets people's attention and uh, gets a lot of smiles, actually. Uh, so, but the reality is, who is your daddy, or who do you serve, God or government? And it's actually the reality of this, the state we're living in, in today in Canada, because if you're not acknowledging God and serving God and, and going after, especially His Word, which is supreme, then guess what happens by default? This is who becomes your daddy. And that's why so you, you ask yourself, for many of us who see the tyranny that's going on, you ask, why? how are people still so brainwashed? It's because they reject this. And then this, by default, happens. Their daddy becomes government. So the question for all of us here is, are you really surrendering and acknowledging the word of God? Because if not, by default, you will acknowledge the words of the government and their beliefs and their ideologies. And we see a lot of that wickedness going on. So that's just the first point I want to quickly make. Okay, because, you know, you ever seen somebody who's in bondage, you know, that has struggles in their life? A lot of that, almost always, it's a result of sin. Okay, I'm just going to tell it like it is. I'm a pastor, that's what I preach about. Jesus called sinners to repentance. And I, I'm the best person to speak because I've sinned in my life. Okay, I'm trying to stop sinning. But the point is, if you sin, you, you bring yourself into bondage. Okay, so guess what happens to the nation? If the nation rejects God, like just what we were just talking about, then by default the government takes over. Men take over and men are, cor are corrupt if they're not in submission to God's word because God is supreme, as Omari mentioned in the Bill of Rights and Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So it's something you really need to consider, right? Because we want freedom and we want to see these tyrannical people be, be taken down and, and justice to be served. But God is not going to allow that until we get the point. This is my opinion, and I'm sticking to it, okay? You may not agree, and that's fine. We don't have to agree. But again, like Omari said, I agree with Omari, not in the sense because I, I get to talk about God. But I, you know, think about it. We're not against free speech. Don't be against someone else's speech. I don't agree with all everything that was said today. There's a lot of great points today. But each one of us has our opinions. And the good thing about it is when everybody can share their opinions, then the people can judge for themselves, right? But if you suppress speech, then you're falling into the same trap that the government is doing to all of us, right? They, and in one way, we're, and where we're united, we all agree that this is what's been going on for two and a half years is tyrannical and evil, right? So we all have, they want to suppress all of us in that sense. So don't start suppressing speech from some other people and start complaining. And whether you see it or not, if you want to if you want to suppress God, we need more God, okay? And I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about really God, okay? Because there's dead religion, there's a lot of temples that have no spirit of God in them. A lot of buildings that say they represent God and they're not representing God. But you can see God and you can read God's word and see what's going on. But the main point I want to talk about today is there's more rumblings about digital ID. You guys see that? In the news, right? They're rolling it out more and more and the Canadian government's doing consultations. I just wanted to read something quickly from, I know we, we're short for time here, but I want to read this. Uh, this is by John Carpe, who's been fighting a lot of the tyranny, representing Pastor Arthur, Jamie Coates, and other people uh, for that were fined for COVID violations and all this stuff. But he says this, this report about digital ID um, attentions to the parallels between the uses of digital ID and technologies in China and Canada, we conclude that the parallels are uncomfortably close. While it is true that these digital technologies promise greater efficiency and accessibility, we caution that they pose a significant but overlooked threat to the Charter of Rights and obviously the Bill of Rights and Freedom. These technologies equip our governments to track the financial and physical behaviors of Canadians and certain alarm and in, and in certain alarming cases to penalize Canadians for exercising their basic charter protected rights and bill of rights freedoms a digital id allows government to go to know where you go what you buy and how you spend your money in recently it, it recently came to light that in 2020 the government of canada you guys know this already probably secretly authorized a surveillance of 33 million canadians there's about 38 million canadians in canada okay so that's almost everybody uh, with uh, Canadian-based smartphones in order to determine whether their users have been complying with COVID mobility restrictions. In 2021, Canadian governments required citizens to present digital proofs of vaccination in order to participate in many spheres of public and private life. 
For example, in Albertans, needed a QR code just to go to a restaurant or a movie theater. Same thing happened here. In 2022, the federal government tracked and froze the bank accounts, as you guys know, of more than 200 Freedom Convoy supporters and associates with no opportunity for appeal or objection. Such interventions have been made possible by the quiet proliferation of digital tracking technology across Canada. But the last sentence in this article, he basically says right on the Canadian website, listen to this, the Government of Canada website describes this technology as one ID to rule them all. And you guys have heard me talk about the mark of the beast. It's in the Bible, right? It's, it's in Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 3, many other places if you study your Bible. And I just encourage you because I care about all of you, even the ones of us that don't agree and maybe totally oppose each other in our ideology, ideological beliefs. We need to turn back to God as a nation and we need to repent and God will move and hew down the wicked, these wicked men in power if we do that. If we don't, then things are just going to go their way they're going and Goliath, that's right in front of our face, is going to continue to have his way. You know, but obviously uh, every week we come out here and we're trying to wake people up, but it, it starts with your own personal life. So who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? God or government? Okay? And people need to see you. People need to see us shining the light. There were some people talking about this in a basic sense. So you got to shine the light of God's word and get into God's word and you'll see change and you'll see it'll impact your sphere. All right? People begin to wake up because God is living and he's real. But we have to we have to do our part. So anyway, I just want to share that. But let's do the Lord's Prayer and then we'll go. Awesome. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as you desired in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us, Lord, our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you all. Okay.